Hey, dear. Hi. Uh, Morning. It's Monday. I'm feeling the Monday. Oh my gosh, of your whole today. family getting the kids out of bed this morning was. <laughs> It was a little rough, uh, but we're here, kind of like waking up, sort of. We slap together some semblance of a right now. Uh, yeah, today. it's gonna be a hodgepodge of products. It will. So first hodge would be the uh, Retro Fifty One Rollerball. Oh, that, if the tracking is correct, should be coming in today. These are some samples mm -hmm. we had previously, but we're gonna have, I think, at least eight of the ten coming today. Now these are all just the regular editions, no poppers, no uh, special designs of anything that we've done. They're redesigning the fountain. So they're redoing the grip, they're going to be putting Yovo nibs on them, so and we're, we're excited for that. For those. Yeah, but we're doing kind of a soft launch of the brand with kind of their regularly offered pens, so we thought it would be good to just familiarize our customer uh, base with um, the brand? The brand, yeah. Yeah, so, they, and for a rollerball, they write very well. Yeah, they are really good. And I actually, I spent some time over the weekend doing some Nib Nook yes, writing samples. Yes, he's had this giant to-do list of oh, all these things we've had for a while to it's do. It's been crazy. Like, I ink up every single pen, every single nib combination. So having to do, like, all the Auroras or all the Graf Bond oh Fabric has cells, it's It's a lot a of lot. work. So I did the Retro 51, um, you know, not that it's means that much to you on its own, but I um, thought you all would be interested in seeing what the nib nook looks like in its raw form. It's it's pretty comparable to like an average medium nib. Um, but then I thought I would, I did a bunch of other nib nooks too, and I just wanted you all to see. Sometimes I do really good, and it's like, One take. boom, like right in there. And as you'll see with most of the other ones, um, it is, it is a hot mess. Oh. Like some of them I'm like lucky to get. Five tries to get two. Well, it's difficult because if like Graf von Faber Castell, it's a lot of words. That name is long, and I like have a very specific place I have to write it because it's got to be consistent wow, across that is a wet all medium. writing samples. It's a fine, fine, and a wet medium. I know, I got that wet medium right here, and you can see sometimes I misspell things or I write a weird letter, um, but the Aurora one was pretty good. The Aurora 18K was good too. Sometimes I like get a little smudge on it, and I'm like, dang, I can't Did use that Did you write one. OB on the other one, or Oblique Brut? I wrote OB because I didn't have room. Oh, okay. So didn't have room. Medium. Yeah. So look for these later in the week. Yes, indeed. Um, so since you just wrote with them, you want to talk about your... Cause we, yeah. We, we picked up some of the Graf pens about a year, year, and, a year and a half ago, and they've been in our queue to do like photography, production, the whole thing, and we just... Well, they have, they have good stock images, and then the, we we didn't get everything in stock for a long time, so I haven't Just had everything. Just got to, Yeah, and I actually didn't even have the extra fine in the gold nib. So, um, first up is the Tamicio. This is the um, more towards, I'm not going to say the lower end, but of the Graf. So, yes. so for those not familiar, Faber-Castell has kind of two lines. Mm -hmm. There's Graf von Faber-Castell, which are the fancy ones, and Faber-Castell Design, which are the, you know, sub $200 ones. Right. So this is part of the Graf line. This is the Tamicio. Um, it has the iconic, like all the Graf pens pretty much have mm -hmm. this, have this cap. cap. Mm -hmm. You can see it's got the little logo there and all go. that in there. Logo. So it's got some weight with this cap. Mm -hmm. it's pole. It's, oh, it's yeah. pole. Mm -hmm. um, this has a steel nib. Very, very smooth steel nib. Like this is a smoother writing steel than anything on their design series. So I came to find. And uh, pretty yeah. wet, it took a little bit to get it going, but once it did, it went. And, uh, and then- Post securely uh, on the back there. So it comes in a couple different resin colors. So I think that was part of the curiosity was like, did these steel nibs write any better than the design series? I think they do. I think they're ground a little bit smoother. It's an interesting grip, but you know, it's almost almost flush with the barrel, so you can hold it kind of right in between and be okay. And the pen's a little bit fatter, still very tubular, you know, just like the uh, Ambition or the Basic, but uh, the the step is not quite as drastic. So I actually I actually find this to be a more comfortable pen personally, but I have larger hands. Voila! And the the fit and finish on these pens is phenomenal. German engineering. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then if you want to go up from there. They have the gold nib pens. Mm -hmm. There's also the Gia. There, there's a lot of other lines. These are just two of them. There the, are, yeah. So this is the Pernambuco. This is the, uh, the well, the Pernambuco is the wood. Yeah. The model is the classic. Boom. So here's the classic. And this uh, Pernambuco wood um, is often used for violin bows. Indeed. Is that correct? I believe that is correct. And this one is a screw cap. 
And they have a whole Longer process grip. for uh, sustainably harvesting this wood. So it's all, uh, you know, green <laughs> yes, indeed. thing. And they said it took them like two years to figure out how to actually make these pens out of wood because it's actually surprisingly difficult yeah, to make pens out of wood. Yeah, you have some experience. They tend I to, do. you know, swell they tend and to split, shrink and crack. crack. Yeah. Um, but these do not do that. So, so the, this, this has, has a, a much name. longer grip, a little bit of a, is that a contour I see at the end? A little bit. Of? It's got okay. a little bit of a flare at the end. Okay. Yeah. And the threads are very subtle. You know, it's got a small step. It's Again, not, that iconic cap. Yeah. That one's a little more in price. Indeed. And these are kind of long, so you can post it, but it's, then it's just like, whoa. Okay. Back heavy. I mean, yeah. And it's, it's a heavy metal cap. Not like that Jin Hao dragon. Not quite like that. <laughs> Nothing quite like that dragon. <laughs> Um, but no, it's a, I found this to be very, very smooth, very wet writing pens. So um, check them out. Yeah, indeed. Oh, Actually, that's a screw cap. Yeah, this one's a screw cap. So. And these are some. These are so new we have we have a lot colors. of Graf inks. They've started to come out with some new ones. There's mm -hmm. three new colors we haven't picked up yet. So just curious what you guys think of them, if you'd be interested. Um, you have a bottle to show what the bottle I looks do. like. I do. I have a bottle of the Viper Green. Which I know you love snakes, Rachel, Ugh, so no. it's just Stop not... saying the word. <laughs> there you go. Here's the bottle. Well, the box, anyway. The bottles are super nice. Very, you know, very attractive bottles. So definitely the kind of desk um, ornament, I guess you could call it. And, of course, the, the cap design kind of emulates the cap of the pen. So that's kind of fancy. Yeah. So very well performing ink, no crazy properties or anything like that, but just an all around good kind of premium level ink. Some of the colors have some water resistance too. I can I can never remember which, but we, we try to keep our products. Yeah, I mean dated. we've we've kind of tested them and they're not like they're not like the they're not like documents, documents or anything. But they're like they'll hold sense. up. And then what is this giant thing here? So I another thing I did looked up was the um, Ooh, it's dusty. the Aurora, <laughs> the 14 karat and 18 karat nibs because we've had well the 14 karats I have no excuse I just flat out haven't. Well, you know what? We had those, a little but, trouble having all the nibs in stock at once. Right. Yeah, and that's that's been kind of touch and go. So the higher end pens we don't keep as many on hand. So sometimes it's you know or sometimes something's back ordered. Yeah. Um, but the uh, 18 karat two have only been available on these like minerales and stuff. So uh, this is this the mineral. This is like a whole production here. And this is just the the current color that we have. The cinnabar. Well, the uh, the minerales are done. We have, I think we have the last. Well, actually, the uh, amethyst was the last color, I think. Oh, okay. But um, all f we have three of the five colors still in stock. But after they are, what we have is what we have, and then they're gone. So this is the um, Aurora 88 Mineral. You were holding mm -hmm. the Optima. That was not. I was Optima. holding the Optima. That's got the 14 karat nib on it, um, just kind of for comparative purposes. So you know the 88 I would consider to be their flagship model. Um, the Optima is also very popular, but um, so you know major differences. Obviously the uh, flat top versus the the rounded, mm -hmm. you know more cigar shape on the 88. Um, this happens to be a demonstrator, but there are several versions, of course. Yeah. Um, the 88, they did a run of flex pens last year. Now the Optima is working through a round of flex pens. Mm -hmm. So there's that going on. But the nibs themselves are designed similarly. So that's why I wanted to show both. Both piston filling pens. Mm -hmm. um, Very smooth piston. Yeah, Aurora makes their own nibs, so they do a lot of their own stuff in-house. And the thing that I like about the demonstrator one is you can actually see what's going on. So it's really cool. It's got a demonstrator nib housing as well, which is really, really clear. So you can see exactly what's going on in there. You can see the feed. You can see exactly where the nib seats in place. Well, and they have the whole hidden reservoir thing. What's that all about? Well, yeah. So I want to show you that because it's, it's the same on the 88 as it is on the Optima. But you can see it with the It's way easier to see on here. So this whole hidden reservoir thing. It's not like a double reservoir, like the Visconti power filler, which I think that's a lot of people's assumptions. So what it is, it has an ink window here, so it kind of is like, oh, maybe it's a double reservoir. That's really not the case. So what, what it is, is the seal, which is this little kind of cloudy, you know, plastic part right here. I don't Can know if it's plastic. Can you put like your hand or something behind it? Keep trying yeah. to focus on that. Oh yeah. <laughs> that is, that is not here. helping anybody. <laughs> Get out of here. So there you go. So this little kind of cloudy part right here. Uh, it has hollow on the inside, 
So it seats against the outside of the walls, and that's what creates the suction when you draw the ink up into the pen. But the inside of it is hollow, which fits around the back of the feed. So when you draw ink up into the pen, it draws some ink up inside that piston seal. That is your hidden reservoir. So the way that that works when you go ahead and draw it So as on. if I were filling ink. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so you're filling, do 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 So that part gets <laughs> filled with ink, and then the rest of the reservoir gets filled with ink. As you're using it, the regular ink reservoir goes down, but the ink kind of hangs up back inside that piston seal. So then when you are, say, in a meeting or just finishing up something, oh my gosh, my pen's out of ink. Boop, you boop, then boop, push boop, the boop, piston boop. all the way down, and then boom, the ink that's in that piston seal touches the back of that feed and you have enough to finish up whatever your meeting or whatever occasion you're doing. You're not gonna like finish up the chapter of your novel because it's only a little bit of ink, but it basically allows you to have a little bit more, a reservoir if you will, uh, from you know your regular writing until you can get back to your desk and fill your pen again. Very smooth pistons. Indeed. Okay, good, you can see that in the window. Yeah, so the nice writing pens, I honestly, did not really see much of a difference between the 14 and 18 karat Any like nibs. spring or anything? No? Not really. Not anything that I was like, whoa. Because some of the pens do offer a 14 karat and an 18 karat. And it's like a hundred dollar upgrade to get hmm. an 18 karat from the 14 karat, which to me is not worth it. But some people really want an 18 karat nib and that's just like their- Did you want to show the Literally writing? their gold standard. Do you want to show the writing samples? I can. Yeah, and I just cleaned all these out, so I'm not gonna ink them all up today. Sorry, everybody. It took me freaking like hours to do all these samples. So um, yeah, I got a good, yeah, good luck Andy trying to get these shots, but anyway. And they're all like in one place. That's so nice, just worked out such. Okay, so you can see the 14, 18 karat. Extra fine, it's, got, it's pretty fine. It is pretty fine on all these pens, you know? Which Aurora, is great they, for, great for uh, Western nibs. Yeah, I mean, these are European uh, nibs, but um, they actually write pretty pretty fine on the, on the extra fine front. So again, I didn't see a huge difference between 14 and 18 K. They felt very similar. I was specifically was kind of seeing if they were any springier. I felt, I felt no difference. Let's put them next to each other. Uh... Like side by side? Yeah. Okay. We, I don't have to do the whole thing, like Aurora and Aurora next to each right. other. I think that'll there be There you go. That'll get good. a little bit of a difference. Mm -hmm. And again, this is just my writing. Uh, you know, this is um, not a completely like scientific approach towards things, but um, cool. very nice writing pens. Um, I find the smoothness to be quite smooth. Um, the steel, the steel, <laughs> <laughs> the steel, the steel Aurora nibs have a little bit of tooth to them. Yeah, the Epsilon, like that's a whole, that's a whole different experience. Like if literally you've only everything tried, about them is different. Just, if, you, if that's the only thing you try, just forget all of that. It's, nope. it's not good about it at all. These so are pretty good. yes, these are bad, all Amy? these are all random pens that we're showing you today. Indeed, yeah, it's, like, it's kind of again, it's kind of a hodgepodge, but this is just where we're at. This is what I was, this is what I was doing in the evenings of my Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So hopefully weekend. our shipment will arrive today as planned and we'll put these in stock. Mm -hmm. um, we also have the Kyoto inks uh, launching today. Which we talked about in right now in like February or something. It was a yeah. while ago. And it's it's weird, Kyoto is like, there's the Kyo Iro and the Kyo Noto. Kyo no Oto. Kyo no Oto. No Oto. Oto. <laughs> so if you see our swabs in the swab shop. We dropped the word Kyoto because it was because it was Kyoto Kyo no Oto, and then the name of the ink, and there's it was like you're not going to see a swap because the entire thing is going to be so filled Kyoto with names. So Kyoto is the, the parent <laughs> brand, and then there's the Kyo Iro <laughs> Kyo no Oto under it. So that's going on. Anyway, we're going to have them. They're very yeah. very traditional, kind of like ancient techniques used to make these inks, like Aroshizuki type style. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if you like that kind of traditional Japanese, if you're over like the sheen and the shimmer, and you're just like I want a good want, conventional, I just want a conventional, easy to clean, nice, pretty decent shading ink. And that's what Kyoto, Kyoto is going to be for you. So anyway, I uh, hope you all have a great Monday. Uh, we perked up a little bit. I'm still dragging, honestly. I haven't tired, even. But... I need to drink this. Yeah. My Zen, as if it's going to perk me up. Oh, there's a little bit of caffeine. Yeah, Zen, zen tea. There's, sli there's on a Monday morning. There, well, there's a slight amount of caffeine. It's green tea. Okay, that's something. She's going into the week nice I'm, and calm. She's, um, she's chillaxing I'm working into this Monday. <laughs> All right, you guys I got have my a great cucumber week. water. I'm like, oh, I got no caffeine at all, but we'll get there. Ten o'clock. That's when I get to have my coffee. I'm like, count down to ten. 
Thanks, guys, and right on. Right on.